So welcome to part one of the Rose Cardigan Crochet Along. I'm so excited to have you here with me and I know you're excited to get started on your cardigans. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how to crochet the back panel as well as sharing the pattern repeat you need to complete this stage of the pattern. If you're just joining me and joining this channel, hi and welcome. My name is Fiona and I am the designer behind Cozy Rosy Crochet. Now before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and of course the notification bell so you can know when the next part of the Rose Cardigan Crochet Along is released. Hopefully by now you've already worked up your gauge swatch and confirmed that you're going to meet gauge for this pattern. If you haven't already completed your gauge swatch, you'll find a link in the top right hand corner to take you over to that section before you start your cardigan. However, if you are taking a risk and just jumping straight in, don't worry, I'm here for it. I'm going to be sharing with you the measurements you're going to be needing to achieve with your back panel, both the width and the length to ensure an excellent fit. Now, one of the skills I want to be sharing as part of this crochet along is how the written pattern looks so that you understand so that you can go on and move on to other garment patterns to really create your own handmade wardrobe. I do want to let you know that if you find that there's a part of the pattern that's a bit not clear or you're not quite getting it feel free to comment below and i will get back to you as soon as possible you can also find a link in the description box below for the written pattern which is visible over on the website and it will be forever free on there for you too and of course you can come and join us in the cozy rosy crochet community which is a facebook group where everyone's going to be stitching up their cardigans together Right, let's check out these materials we need to make our cardigan. Now I have already gone in detail as to how much yarn you're going to be needing, but I don't know if I've shared with you yet the actual yarn that I'm going to be using. So for this sample, I'm going to be using Lion Brands Respect, and this is a recycled polyester blend. It uses 45% recycled polyester, 30% acrylic, and 25% cotton. So it is not the softest it could be, but I'm hoping it's going to really wash up well when I give it a block and I'm going to show you how to increase the softness of your yarn if you need to. I'm going to be using a five millimeter crochet hook, which is what I achieved gauge with, with this DK size three light yarn. Um, this is kind of not what I would call um, a traditional double knit for those in the UK. Um, it's a little bit heavier than our standard double knits and I achieved gauge quite easily with my five millimeter hook. You can use an Aran, a Worsted, size four, whichever you need. Um, if you want some more help with selecting your yarns, if you're now a bit concerned, like, oh my goodness, she's using a size three, the pattern's written for a size four, please go and check out my video about substituting yarn. Again, I'll link, link this in the top right hand corner for you, just so you can start your project with confidence. However, you can just jump in and make the first kind of section of the pattern, because that's when I'm going to tell you to check your measurements. So you've got your yarn, your hook, whichever hook was recommended. Mine is a five millimeter. And then I'm going to encourage you to grab your measuring tape once again, because we should have measured ourselves. <laughs> If you're not sure what size you should be making, there is another video which takes you through how to measure yourself um, to check which size you want to be making. I'm going to pop on the screen here the schematic, which is what I discussed in depth in my last video, which will give you the panel width per size and also which length you want to make. Now, obviously, if you're making a longer length, you're going to potentially need more yarn. So do bear that in mind. I am going to be making an extra large and the length that I have chosen to make is a mid thigh length. So I'm using quite a lot. I've got nine balls all together and I don't think I'm going to need quite that much, but I just like to get an extra one just in case. So once you've got all of your materials, let's jump in and start this pattern. So as you can see on the screen here, each size is going to start with a different length of chain. The chains are written in size order. So for instance, an extra small needs to chain a 49 and the 5XL needs to chain a 97. And in between that, each of the individual sizes are listed. So for instance, if you're making an extra large like me, we can count across from the start to work out where our sizes are going to be listed. So chain 49 is an extra small, chain 55 is a small, chain 61 would be a medium, chain 67 would be a large. I'm making an extra large, which is a chain of 73, and the sizes continue up from there. So a 2XL would be a chain of 79, 3XL would be 85, 
4XL 91 and that 5XL is 97. So we are going to start by making a slip knot by bringing that working yarn through a loop and we can place the loop onto our crochet hook. I'm just going to tighten that so it's right up to my hook, making sure that I'm using the biggest part of my hook. So I need to make a chain of 67. So to make our chain, we simply bring the yarn over the hook, tilt the hook to the floor and bring it through the loop on our hook. So that was one. And we're going to repeat that until we have the right number of chains. So three. So go ahead and make your chain for the size that you need to be making. I'm making the extra large, so I'm doing a chain of 73. 72 and 73. So I have my chain here all the way down. And from here, we're going to continue in row one by working our first stitch. Now, our stitch that we're using in the main element of our panel is the extended half double crochet. So if you're familiar with the half double crochet stitch, it uses that stitch with one extra step. Now this loop on our hook does not count as a stitch and there is our first chain and we're going to be working into that second chain from hook. So we've got one and two. So I'm going to cover up the next one so I know where I'm inserting my hook. We're going to yarn over the hook and insert our hook into that second chain from hook. We're going to yarn over, bring our loop back through. Instead of normally just we're going to yarn over and pull through all three, there's one extra step to make it an extended half double crochet. So for here, we're going to yarn over the hook, bring it through just the first loop on our hook. So we still have three loops on and you can see you've got one completed loop already. And this time we yarn over and pull through the remaining three loops. And that's an extended half double crochet. We're going to continue to work one extended half double crochet into each chain across. So we'll do a few more with you. So we yarn over the hook, ignore that nice big hole. We're going into that next chain. We're going to yarn over to bring our third loop up. I'm going to make that look a bit neater for you. I'm going to yarn over and just pull through that first loop on our hook. So we still have three loops. We yarn over and pull through all three loops. And we're going to repeat this all the way down. Ignore that big hole. We're going into that next chain, working another extended half double crochet. So once you have those three loops on your hook, just yarn over and pull through that first loop only. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. Once again, we yarn over, insert our hook into the next chain. Yarn over, bring a loop up yarn over, pull through that first loop on our hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops. Now we're going to continue to repeat this all the way down for row one until we reach oh, our back to where our slip knot is and I'm going to meet you at the end of row one to check our stitch counts. So continue to work one extended half double crochet all the way down and I'll meet you at the end of row one. So at the end of row one, we're going to check our stitch counts because it's really important that the foundation of our project has the right stitch count before we move on. On the screen here, you can see the sizes and the stitch counts per size. So extra small should have a stitch count of 48, 54, 60, 66, 72, 78, 84, 90 and 96. And they should all be extended half double crochets. Now it's probably really tempting, you can just see my tape measure here just off camera because it's really tempting to measure this and think that's going to be the finished size. But strangely, it won't be because as you continue to work, your project will increase in size. What is really important is that your piece is flat, so you haven't got it giving you a frown or you haven't got it smiling at you. If your first row is smiling or frowning, it means that your starting chain was either too tight or too loose. So for instance, if you have a frown and it's kind of curving in at the sides, it means that your starting chain was a bit too tight and you might want to go up half a millimetre or one hook size to start do your starting chain again. If your first row is smiling at you, it means that your starting chain was a little bit too loose which is uncommon, but it does happen. So make sure that when you lay your piece of crochet flat, 
you might have a slight curl don't worry about that too much because we can fix that later anything more than that if it's completely rolling up I would recommend doing this row again until you've got it laying flat it's not smiling it's not frowning because then you have the perfect first row to continue in your crochet garment so as long as your stitch count is correct we can continue into rows two to six rows two to six is a chain one EHDC in same and each across. This is a nice easy row to decipher. Very simply we are going to make a chain of one and you can see in brackets there it says does not count. That's because that chain one does not count as a stitch. So it's not the equivalent of an extended half double crochet. So let's make our turning chain of one and turn our work ready to continue with row two. So we're going to yarn over the hook and we're working into the same stitch as our chain one because that chain one does not count as a stitch so you can see there's my chain one here's my first stitch and this is where we're going to be inserting our hook so we're going to yarn over the hook and insert underneath both loops of our stitch yarn over bring our loop up yarn over pull through just that first loop yarn over and pull through all three loops and we're going to continue to repeat this all the way across for row two which is why it says EHDC in same so extended half double crochet in the same as the chain one and then EHDC in each across and that means each stitch across so continue to work your extended half double crochets for a total of six rows so we're working row two and we're going to do rows two three four five and six all the exact same as row two. So continue to repeat row two until you have a total of six rows. So this is row one, this is row two, and I'll meet you in a moment once you have done your first six rows, working one extended half double crochet into each stitch across, remembering that each row starts with a turning chain of one that does not count as a stitch. Now your stitch count should remain the same after each row, and it's at that point we're going to be able to measure and see the width of our project. So, um, so I will meet you at the end of row six. So once you've completed your first six rows, so one, two, three, four, five, six, this is a really good time to double check the width of your project. Now mine doesn't quite fit on screen. So um, I'm making an extra large, and I'm going to pop the schematic back on here for you, just so you can double check your sizing. So the width for your extra small is 16, small is 18, medium is 20, large is 22, extra large is 24, 2XL is 26, 3XL is 28, 4XL is 30, and 5XL should be 32 inches across. So I'm going to grab my tape measure and just literally place it at the edge. All the, oh, a bit awkward to do this. Hang on, let me bring that over. Start at the edge. Oh, I'm about an inch short. Oh no, maybe not. <laughs> it's just making sure that you've got the the space in your pattern there because it's quite easy I mean I'm not I'm going to stretch mine a bit because I'm going to block this project at the end so with a good stretch we're just about at 24 you can see that on the screen um, and that's important that we've reached the right size now before we go any further I'm going to go into row seven get some more yarn up so you should now have your six rows of extended half double crochet and we're going to chain one to turn again this chain one does not count and we're changing our stitch because we're going to start the little lacy section in between these panels of six rows so we're going to be working half double crochets and we're going to be working a half double crochet v stitch or the equivalent of so we're going to yarn over and half double crochet in the same stitch as your chain one so once again where your chain one's coming out of we're just going to insert our hook underneath both loops of our stitch yarn over bring a loop up yarn over and pull through all three loops now our pattern repeat for this row starts here so we're going to skip the next stitch 
and into the next stitch along. So we skip the next. And then if I show you the written pattern here, you can see we have um, an abbreviation within brackets. Now those abbreviations within a bracket should be repeated into the same stitch. So we're going to skip the next and then into the next stitch, we're going to yarn over and work one half double crochet. We're going to chain one. And then working back into the same stitch again, we yarn over to work a further half double crochet. So that pattern repeat is we skip the next and then into the next stitch, we work one half double crochet. So we yarn over, insert, bring our loop up, yarn over and pull through three. We then chain one. And then we work a further half double crochet by yarning over and inserting into the same stitch to bring our third loop up, yarn over and pull through all three loops. Now this is going to create a really cute lacy element to this cardigan and break up these blocks of the extended half double crochets. So we're going to repeat this skipping one stitch and then working one half double crochet, a chain one, and a further half double crochet into the same stitch. I'm gonna repeat that all the way along to this last stitch here. So not the second from last, the last. So keep repeating that all the way across and I shall meet you at the end of row seven. So it's just one half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet, remembering to skip that stitch in between. So we skip and then work one half double crochet, a chain one, and a further half double crochet into the same stitch. So it should be looking a little bit something like that. So keep repeating that all the way across and I'll meet you at the end of row seven. So I'm meeting you back here. I still have three stitches remaining and I'm just gonna, in case you're worried about where you're working these last few stitches, so we're going to skip that next stitch into the next one. We work our half double crochet, chain one and another half double crochet. And then all that's left to do in that last stitch is to work a final half double crochet. So at the end of row seven, you should have the following stitch counts. Remember, these are given in size order. So have a look through, do a double check. For me, I'm going to admit I'm just going to count my chain one spaces. So I've put those on there for you as well. So um, I should have 35 chain one spaces, which are these spaces in between. And then I know I've got my half double crochets either side and that should give me my correct stitch count. So providing your stitch count is correct, we are going to go straight into row eight and we're starting with a turning chain of one. And for row eight, we're going to be working back into these chain one spaces all the way across. We've done our turning chain of one. So we're going to start by yarning over and working a half double crochet into the same stitch as our chain one. Before we work the half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet into the chain one space. If you're not familiar with what you're looking at in front of you, You've just worked your stitch here. This is a half double crochet. You did a chain one and another half double crochet. And we're going in between these two stitches here. And that's the chain one space in between. Once again, as you can see on the pattern here, the stitches are written in between brackets. So it's gotta be worked into the same stitch or space. In this case, we're gonna be working these stitches into our chain one spaces. So we yarn over and insert into that chain one space between those two half double crochets, we're working one half double crochet, a chain one, and a following half double crochet into the same chain one space. Now it's important that we don't work into this space here because that's actually a stitch. This is the stitch of our, the top of our half double crochet from the previous row. So we're gonna ignore this space here. We're looking for in between the posts of our stitches you can see here you've got two stitches coming out of that one stitch and it's in between there that we're working, right there. So we're going to yarn over, insert our hook into that next chain one space, work a half double crochet, a chain one, followed by another half double crochet, all into that same 
chain one space. You just cheat and bring that back up. Now we're going to repeat this all the way across, ignoring that stitch because that is part of a stitch. We're going to work into the chain one spaces all the way across. So continue to repeat that all the way down to your last chain one space and I'll meet you here to go through the final stitch. I'm just working my final half double crochet, chain one half double crochet. We have this final stitch that we need to skip and then we're going to work one half double crochet into that final stitch of row eight. So we now have this really cute lacy section in amongst our rows of extended half double crochets. Your stitch count will remain the same in row eight as it was for row seven. And we're going to go straight into row nine because this takes us back to our extended half double crochets. We start by making a turning chain of one. And if we have a look at the written pattern here, you can see that it's saying to chain one, extended half double crochet in the same stitch as our chain one, just like we've been doing. And then it's saying to skip the next extended half double crochet in the chain one space into the extended half double crochet. So let's have a look at what that actually means. So we've got our chain one here. There's our first stitch. So we're going to work our extended half double crochet again. So just going back into that stitch where the chain one is coming out of, yarn over, bring our loop up. Got those three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through that first loop only before we yarn over and pull through all three loops. So it's telling us to skip the next stitch and place one extended half double crochet into the chain one space. So we yarn over, insert into the chain one space in between those two half double crochets, yarn over, bring a loop up, just pull through that first loop yarn over and pull through the remaining three loops. And we then work one extended half double crochet into the next. So we skipped this stitch in our previous row, but in this row, we're going to place another extended half double crochet. So you've just worked into the chain one space. Here's our next stitch. There's our next chain one space. So we're going to work into that stitch in between our chain one spaces effectively. So we yarn over, insert our hook, bring our loop up, yarn over, pull through that first loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops. So the pattern repeat for here is we skip the next working one extended half double crochet into the chain one space. We then work one extended half double crochet into the next stitch. This is what you can see here is actually your chain one and we've worked into that chain one space. So we're going to yarn over and work into this next stitch in between these posts here. So we yarn over and insert, bring our loop up, just pull through that first loop before we pull through all three loops. So continue to repeat that the whole way down till you reach your last chain one space and I'm going to meet you here because we're going to do something a little bit different. Although it's not different, I just want to make sure you get it spot on. So continue to repeat that all the way down. We're going to skip the next stitch, working our extended half double crochet into our chain one space. We then work into that next stitch by working a further extended half double crochet. So repeat that all the way down and I will meet you ready for those last few stitches of row nine. So I've just worked my last extended double crochet into that last chain one space and you should still have two stitches remaining. So we're going to work an extended half double crochet into the next stitch. And this is the really important one and it's easy to miss this last stitch because it can get confusing with your turning chain. So there is one more stitch to work into and we need to place another extended half double crochet into that final stitch. So at the end of round nine, you should be back to your original stitch count that we had at the end of row one to six. And as you can see, if I hold it at that angle, you can see that we're gonna add on another block of our extended half double crochets. So I've now shown you every single stitch that we're going to be using and the full pattern repeat for 
the back panel of our piece. So now we just need to work out how many repeats we need to do, depending on what size you are making. So depending on which length you're going to be making will depend on the number of repeats you need to do to, it, to reach the length of your back panel. We've already checked the width and that should be matching what the schematic tells us. Remember, if you need to double check, you can go and have a look on the website. It's all linked in the description box for you. So all the sizes are going to follow the same repeat pattern. We're going to be repeating rows two to row nine for a certain number of times, depending on what length you're going to be making. So for instance, if you're making the crop length of 14 inches, you're going to be repeating rows two to nine two more times for a total of 25 rows. So you're going to work row two to six, which is just one extended half double crochet into each row across, followed by the row seven and eight with that beautiful little V stitch in there, followed by that final row we've just worked. And you're going to do that two more times in total. If you're making the hip length, which is 22 inches, you're going to be working four repeats of row six to nine to give you a total row count of 41. For the mid thigh length, which is about 30 inches, you're going to be repeating rows two to nine six more times for a total row count of 57. And then the knee length, you're going to be repeating row two to nine seven more times for a total row count of 65. Of course, you can go and rewatch all of these rows again so that you're happy with them. Just make a note of how many repeats you do. And then once you've done that repeat and you've reached either row 25, 41, 47, no, 41, 57 or 65, I'm going to meet you back here because there's one final repeat we need to do. So go ahead and make those repeats. I'll meet you back in a little while once you've done them to give you the final section of the back panel. So I've made the majority of my back panel and I'm just checking my length. And it's not going to be quite to the full length yet because I have a few more rows to make. And so do you. So don't worry if you haven't quite reached that total length yet. We have a few more rows to go. So once you have reached your final repeat, I've actually gone ahead and worked the last few rows because I have no memory of what I'm doing. So apologies about that. I'm going to show you instead. So once you've done, you've reached those final rows. So you should be either on row 26, row 42, 58 or 66, depending on which row you've done. This is my row 57 all the way up here, straight after that stitch so let's pretend I don't have that on there um, what we're going to do as you can quite obviously see is we're going to add on one final repeat or one block of our extended half double crochets so that our lace pattern is within our pattern so if I turn it on this side you should start with a nice block of extended half double crochets and we'll end with a block of half double crochets as well so those final five rows are just going to be one extended half double crochet into each stitch across remembering your turning chain of one and that completes your back panel once you've worked those final rows you should be at the correct length for your back panel now, obviously if you find that you want to make yours a bit longer or you think it's too long for you you can of course adjust that length that is entirely up to you i'm not here to dictate what length your cardigan should be mine is um so let me just measure mine again. I am a little bit short. I've lost an inch somewhere. Now I'm not overly worried about being one inch too short because I'm more than one inch short than the average person. So my length is going to be pretty much spot on. Instead, I'm going to leave mine as it is. So if you do want to add some extra length on, you can just add on row seven and eight from where you are and then add on another row two to six repeat of just the extended half double crochets and that will add on about four inches very easily. Once you have finished your back panel that is of course the end of this section of the pattern. Now there is no need to rush this I don't want you to think you have to have it done by tomorrow. The next part of the pattern let me just turn that so it looks nice and pretty. The next part of the pattern is going to be for the side panels. Now we're going to have two separate side panels coming in because there's going to be a nice v-neck shape it's going to be actually more like a sweetheart neckline and they're going to be different because the decreases need to be worked on different sides of the pattern 
So the next part of the pattern to be released, which will be coming out on the following Friday, will be for the left side panel. And then the week after will be your right side panel. So there really is no need to rush. This pattern is going to be released over a number of weeks to keep you going without worrying about being too quick about it. I hope you are finding these stitches beautiful because I certainly love them. I love the ripple effect of the extended half double crochets and I'm hoping that you do too. So thank you for joining me for this part of the pattern. Do come on over to the community group so that we can share in your success in completing your back panel and I will see you in the next video.